This is what I hope to be a 100% solar powered drone. For years now I have wondered is it possible for a drone to fly on solar power alone and in this video we're going to find out once and for all. Now there's actually two key parts to this project. The first part is a traditional drone so that's going to be the motors, the propellers, the frame. The second part to this project is going to be the solar panel system. Now my plan is to first get the drone flying on its own with a standard battery and then getting the solar panel system working on its own and then lastly once those are both working I'm going to combine them together into hopefully building a solar powered drone. The motors I've chosen for this project are the Anti-Gravity by T-Motor and these things are very light and super efficient which is exactly what we need. The propellers also by T-Motor and they're these beautiful NS carbon fiber props. This one is 18 inches which is absolutely massive. Just to put it in comparison, these are the props that we use for the world's fastest drone. So you can see how much larger these things are. For the frame, I'm going to be using these standard 14 millimeter carbon fiber tubes and the motors are going to be mounted onto the end of each of these arms. I needed a way of mounting the flat motor base to the round carbon fiber tube. So I hopped into Onshape and designed this really simple system where the mount clamps around the tube and then the motor just screws into the top. After 3D printing the motor mounts out of Fibron PA6, I screwed the motors on and then I clamped them around the carbon fiber tubes. Next I installed the huge 18 inch propellers and this thing really started to take shape. I've got the propellers on now and this thing is big. It's gonna be huge once it's all done. Look at that. To hold the arms together, I designed this really simple system where in the center, the arms will overlap one another and then they'll be clamped nice and tight together with this 3D printed piece. It's bolted all together and it feels really good to be honest. I mean, it's so simple, but sometimes simple is better. And at the bottom there, with these bolts sticking out, I'm gonna mount the flight controller and the ESC there. Next, I had to design some legs for the drone to make sure that the props don't ever hit the ground. I realized that I could just make an extension on the bottom motor mount, and this would save a lot of overall weight on the drone. The legs are installed, and I think it's gonna work. We've got some good ground clearance here for the propellers. With the drone frame fully assembled, it's time to wire up all the electronics. I ran the motor wires all the way through the arms and cut holes for them to come out in the center where I could solder them directly to the ESC. From there, I just needed to attach and wire up the flight controller and this drone was ready for testing. That was like eight watts. And it started lifting off the ground. That is insane. Obviously, this project is all about efficiency. So I needed to test and find out exactly how much thrust the motors were producing and how much power was required to produce that thrust. This motor and propeller combo really exceeded my expectations, producing up to 17 grams of thrust per watt. To put that in perspective, my world record speed drone on takeoff produces about 0.7 grams of thrust per watt, meaning this drone is going to be about 24 times more efficient. I brought the drone down to the Seapoint Promenade just to test fly it a little bit of a hover and get the tune right. And I've actually got some tethers here with some lead weights, so I'm going to tie the drone down on each corner with one of these weights just to stop anything catastrophic from happening if it isn't quite right and tries to flip over or something. The drone started out super rough and it would immediately get into this pretty uncontrolled oscillation. So I'm really glad we had the tethers on there. I'm gonna try again with slightly lower gains and longer tethers. I'm gonna take the tethers off now, so hopefully it doesn't go out of control, but I think it'll be fine. Now that is a stable drone, eh? Okay? And you can't even hear it. It's crazy. It is so quiet. 
I'm very happy with how stable the drone turned out after tuning and now it's just a question of can the drone carry the extra weight of the solar panels and do they generate enough power to fly this drone. Now that the drone is up and flying, it's time to get the solar panel system working. And I bought 100 of these. They're basically a really lightweight, bare bones solar panel. And it's great that they're so lightweight, but what that also means is they're super brittle and fragile. So even if you look at these the wrong way, they can crack. So I'm a bit nervous about that. I'm getting a reading of... Yep. I told you they were fragile, look at that. Okay, I've got another one here. I'll try not to break this one too. Luckily I bought... I just broke that one as well. These things are ridiculous. I think it'll still get a reading though. Okay, so we're getting 695 millivolts, so 0.69 volts. I want to get some real world numbers of exactly how much power these panels are producing before I put any of them on the drone. So I've got a resistor here and it's actually a power resistor rated at 50 watts and this will be able to dump power generated by the panels and essentially give me a really good indication of how much power they are generating in direct sunlight. I've got my thermal camera here so I'm going to power it through this power supply and just see what kind of temperatures it gets up to. That is pretty warm and it's still going up 72, 73. I think this is the perfect time for me to thank Onshape for sponsoring this video and making this entire project possible. As you would have noticed by now, I designed every single aspect of this drone on Onshape and it's honestly been a breeze. It's so simple, intuitive and easy to use. And on top of that, it's been so stable. I remember when I used Fusion 360, it would crash and become unresponsive all the time and Onshape hasn't done that once. It's not actually too surprising that it works so well because it is the world's most widely used online native CAD platform. And another cool bonus of that is you are able to do real-time collaborations with other people remotely. If you want to support this channel and also allow me to do more projects like this in the future, then please check out my link, which is onshape.pro forward slash Luke Maximobel. And over there, you can get up to six months of Onshape Pro for free. So it's the perfect way to try it out and see if it's the right CAD platform for you. I'm busy CNCing my aluminum heatsink on my Carvera Air. And I must say, there is something just so satisfying about designing something in a CAD software like Onshape and then getting to see it come to life. So we're at a minute and a half and the previous test at this point the resistor was already at 100 degrees celsius but currently it's only at 48 so this is doing much better the next step is to solder the panels together and i decided to start with the 3x3 array so i could test the power output of that i finished the support structure for the solar panel array and this is essentially just a bunch of three millimeter carbon fiber tubes joined together with 3d printed tpu pieces It's all taped together now and I think it actually looks pretty good. After testing the panels on my balcony, I got a power output of about 5 watts per panel which is actually much better than I expected so I was really happy with this result. I've calculated that a 27 panel array should be enough for this thing to fly properly, at least for the part 1 version. Three days later. I was just about to go outside and test these solar panels for the first time when this little guy, Remy, decided it would be a good idea to stand on them. And he broke that one right there. So I'm gonna have to repair it before I test it, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. They are so fragile. However, I have managed to install and print these 3D printed standoffs out of TPU. And what they do is they lift up the panel at 10 degrees so that when the drone is flying forward, nice and slowly, the panels will be looking straight up at the sun, which is exactly what we want. 
After replacing the damage panels, we took them out on a nice sunny day to see exactly how much power 27 panels altogether in series can generate. And we are consistently delivering 97 watts at about 24 volts to these resistors, which are getting really hot. 112. But that 112 degrees on these. <laughs> but that is definitely enough. I kind of just wanted to see if it could sustain this because obviously when this is in the sun, these are gonna heat up and get less efficient. So we really need to know that they will work. So we mounted the panels onto the drone and it looks really funny as it is. And obviously you can see that the panels are drooping, which is not ideal, but it is gonna be reinforced before we properly fly this. Right now we just want to essentially see if the panels can directly power the drone without a charge controller in between and also just see what power we can draw from it like this 30 watts but the it's stable hey yeah 60 sticking on 60 Even more, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut it there. I just definitely left there would have taken off without. Oh, easily. I think it went up to um, 100, 150 watts. Wow. Now we just needed to wait for a windless day and carefully transport this thing to the flying field. The day has finally come where we get to put everything together and see if this thing will actually fly. So I am really excited. I've got the drone sitting over there. I'm first gonna fly it again just with no solar panels on it on a little battery just to make sure the tune and everything is happy and then we're gonna put the solar panels on and take it for a flight. No, it's fine, nice. I mean, it is like... It is weird to fly because of how like slow and stable it is. The solar panels are installed and I think nothing is broken. It's almost time to take this thing in the air. I'm very nervous but also very excited to see what it does. Okay, take off. Hey, fly! <laughs> No battery, 100% solar panel. Wow. Oh, it's a bit shaky, but it's it's flying. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's handling it okay. That is no battery, not even a capacitor bank, just solar power. That is so cool. Oh, cool. How nice is that? This drone was honestly so much fun to fly around and it was actually really funny because I kept on thinking to myself Oh, when am I gonna need to change the battery or I need to check the battery level and then I realized as long as the sun is out This thing can keep on flying indefinitely Nice, okay yo. Ooh, that was <laughs> I was going to crash there at the end, but yeah, no. <laughs> no, we're okay. I would definitely say that was a huge success. The drone flew on its own, 100% solar power, not even a battery on board, not even a charge controller. And as you can see, it's actually still in one piece, which is amazing. For part two of this project, I'm going to put even more panels on it, install a GPS and autonomous flight software. And we're going to try and break the Guinness World Record for the world's longest flying drone. So make sure you're subscribed to see that and I'll see you in the next one.